Here's the step-by-step -step guide to becoming a thoughtful. Step 1. Die. Well, that was enlightening to say the least, but it was not very far-fetched. The reactors that we are going to discuss today have pretty dangerous fuels. So the reactor that we are going to go for are the Watts reactor and the Fusionary Watts reactor. Both of them are mid to late game reactors and they are pretty expensive to run. And the most dangerous thing about them is the fuels that they use. I mean, seriously, a black hole as a fuel, that's something. So with that said guys, without any further ado, let's get into this video and discuss all there is to know about these reactors. Okay guys, so we are going to start this video with the Watts reactor and then we are going to go for the Fusionary Watts reactor. So to build the Watts reactor, you are going to need 96 Watt stability element, 88 watts reaction chambers, 44 watt supercoolers, 88 reinforced control rods, 12 electricity ports, 1 watts reactor control computer, 4 excess hatches, and finally 172 reinforced stone. You are also going to need titanium filter, and then these are the pellets that will supply as a fuel. So, in order to build this reactor, or also in order to build the fusionary watts reactor, you are gonna need the multi block structure marker. There is no other way that you can build this by any other means possible. So right click on the structure marker and when you have the watts, so here is how, it is how it's gonna look. And in order to give you an idea, here's a sectional view of the watts power plant. So this is how the structure looks from the inside. This is what you have to build. So you better have some scaffolds. And once this reactor is completed, you can access it through the excess hatches provided on all four sides. So let's try and running this reactor by seeing what its GUI looks like. So when you click on it, this is the GUI. It has the poisonous mud which it will produce as waste and it has all these slots for fuel. Now pure scrabadium fuel, HES, MES and LES which are the high, low and medium enriched scrabadium fuels, beryllium, neptunium, lead and advanced fuels these are all the different kind of fuels that are available so all of these fuels have different heat capacities right and this reactor will produce energy based on the heat and all these pellets will last for a specific amount of ticks which is provided in the description of the pellets so here i am posting a photo of all the pellets and their properties take a good look at them and then you can decide with what you want to re run your reactor. Okay, so now that you have seen that, what the different kind of fuels and the properties are, here is where you get your power output from. So we are going to go to a secondary watts reactor, which I have built in the distance, so that I can show you what its meltdown looks like. So first of all, I'm going to take the fuel needed and Keeping scrabadium in your inventory will give you temporary blindness, so be careful about that. And here's another watts reactor that I have built. So first of all, place down the titanium filter and then start placing down the pellets like this. And as you can see, we have power and heat. Now as you keep on increasing the amount of pellets, the amount of heat or the waste per ticks, the percentage of decay, everything will start on increasing. As you can see, we have increased the amount of HE per ticks that we are producing. And this combination is pretty good by the way. The HES or the high enriched scrabadium in alternate slots and then the advanced watch pellets in another slot. And as you can see, we are producing power. So let's connect our cable and see how much power we are getting. And dang, would you look at that. We are nearly getting 12 to 13 million HEs per tick. That is quite a lot of power that this reactor can produce. Now, as you can see, the poisonous mud is increasing slowly, right? Now, you have to take this poisonous mud out continuously. Because if you don't, then this poisonous mud will come out through one of the random excess hatches on any side. So, in order to speed this process up, 
I'm going to take out some of the HES or the high enriched scribidium pellets and then replace them with pure scribidium pellets. Now this will significantly increase the waste vertex and yeah, our waste or basically our poisonous mud will fill up pretty quickly. So we are nearly full and once you will see that this poisonous mud has been filled, it will come out through a random excess hatch and you don't want that by the way. Poisonous mud is a really corrosive liquid, really corrosive. You don't want it in your world. And there, see that? Oops. Yeah, the poisonous mud came out and now it will dig a hole in the ground because yeah, it will go through sand and into the ground until you start taking it out. Also, let me show you something else. If I close all the four excess hatches, so that will basically mean that poisonous mud has nowhere else to go. When I do that, this reactor will go complete meltdown. Let's see. There, and look at that. Our reactor is completely gone now. Yep, it's destroyed. As you can see, we are not even producing any power now. So this is how you make the reactor undergo complete meltdown. Either you make so that there is nowhere for the poisonous mud to go or you overheat the reactor. So I'm back on my first watts reactor that I showcased you and I have filled it up with the normal fuels, right? The HES and the advanced pellets. And now I'll show you how to use the poisonous mud because poisonous mud is not completely useless. You can take out a lot of things from it. So the very first thing that you need to do is you need somewhere to store the poisonous mud. So I suggest getting a tank which is not corrosive affected, which is not affected by corrosion basically. And once you do that, take out your gas centrifuge and power it up. And then set the gas centrifuge to process the poisonous mud. Now the poisonous mud will give you a lot of different things. It can give you dust, it can give you uranium, it can give you plutonium. So yeah, it's not that this is completely useless. And you can get some pretty good things out of it. So yeah, that was all there is to know about the Watts reactor. Use it carefully. Now let's take a look at the fusionary Watts reactor. This gargantuan right here. Now, in order to build the fusionary watts plant, you are going to need a lot of things. 922 superconducting magnets, 6 fusionary watts calculation matrices, 1 fusion watts core, the 101 regenerative coolant tank shells, 45 regenerative cooling tanks, 256 watts structural support blocks and 4 excess hatches. As for the fuels, you are going to need antimatter and anti scrabidium And you are also going to need a fuel and a singularity so yeah singularity this reactor actually runs off a black hole crazy right don't drop it as you saw in the beginning of the video it's dangerous so here's a sectional view of the fusionary watts power plant and as you can see there is a lot of empty space in between right now in this space mobs can spawn and there are mobs in my fusionary watts reactor right now. But don't worry, as soon as you start the reaction, those mobs are gonna die. And you will hear that when I start the reaction. So let's access this reactor through the excess hatch and let's get our fuels. And I'm gonna use the mini black hole or the miniature black hole in order to run this reactor. So click on the GUI and pop in the miniature black hole. Then you're also gonna need fuse and once you place the fuse you can see a coolant has filled up so this reactor produces its own coolant pretty good right then place the antimatter in the first slot and the anti scrabidium in the second slot and our reaction will start we are producing power now the reason this reactor is so expensive to run is because of the anti scrabidium you need to produce anti scrabidium from antimatter and producing antimatter is a pretty difficult thing as you need a full fledged particle accelerator for that. But look at the amount of power that we are producing. It's literally 0.2 giga HE per ticks. That is a lot of power. 
Now once the fuel runs out, this reactor will stop producing power. So in order to continue producing power, you need to keep supplying it with fuel. That's why this reactor is so expensive. Because it's not easy to get your hands on antimatter and discrebidium. Now antimatter and antiscrebidium, both of them are pretty dangerous. So let me drop a vial of antimatter. Boom. Nope. Something that you don't want dropping in your world. And the antiscrebidium is even more dangerous. Bam. It literally produced a small fog Wagner field and took out a large chunk of area. And it will take out your base pretty quickly too. So that was all I had for this video guys. I hope you found it informative. If you did, do smash that like button and also subscribe to my channel if you want to see more content like this in the future. Let me know in the comment section down below if you like this video or not. Peace out my guys. Stay safe.